But anyway, this video is about generating a multiple regression model, okay? A multiple linear regression model. So how do we do that within within SPSS? It's actually quite straightforward. Uh, we go to analyze, okay? Uh, we go to regression. Here's regression here, okay? We choose linear, okay? And I'm just going to choose linear here. Actually, let me just reset that, okay? And we get this pop-up window where we need to specify the dependent variable. That's the variable we're trying to understand. That's the variable whose, whose, whose fluctuations and variance we're trying to account for, okay? And in this case, it's intention to stay, okay? And we put our dependent variable in the dependent variable field, okay? And then we specify our independent variables. Now, I'm going to specify all our independent variables in one single block, okay? Which means that I'm not trying to control for any variables initially. So my independent variables are, I believe job satisfaction influences intention to stay. I also believe that gender influences intention to stay. And I think that the two age variables, age dumb one, and also age dumb two, will influence our intention. Oh, age dumb one and also age dumb two will influence our intention to stay, okay? So actually what we have here is we have a list of all of our independent variables, okay? It's all in one block, block one of one, okay? There's no other block. I'm not controlling for any particular, any particular independent variable here at this stage. Now, I have got another uh, collection of videos that actually go through and show us how to, I suppose, test the, the, the preconditions that are associated with a regression model. Uh, for example, how do we test for multicollinearity? Actually, if we go into statistics here, I'm not going to do it here because it generates a lot of output, but you can watch one of my other videos on this. Yeah? If I go into statistics, I can ask for collinearity di diagnostics. Okay, These particular diagnostics returns, I suppose they return two values, they return what's called the tolerance value, and they return another value called the VIF value, which is the variance inflation factor. Actually, the tolerance and the variance inflation factor are, 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 are related to each other. One is the inverse of the other. Okay? So actually looking at one, we get an interpretation of whether whether the, the, the independent variables, whether there's any uh, collinearity between them, okay? Uh, either one gives us, the, gives us the, same, the same result, but we just interpret them a little bit differently. But I'm not actually going to do that, okay? Another type of, another sort of, uh, I suppose, precondition associated with regression is what's known as autocorrelation. And autocorrelation in relation to the error terms, yeah, okay? In relation to these particular residuals that we have. And it's important that there's no autocorrelation between, between, uh, between our error terms. And one way we test for that is using the Durbin-Watson statistic. It's a statistic that gives us a value back and that value is always between 0 and 4. The closer it is to 4, the more evidence to suggest that there's a positive autocorrelation between, between, the, uh, between the error terms. Uh, the closer it is to 0, indicating that there's more evidence to suggest that there's a negative uh, autocorrelation. And when it's in around 2, okay, well, that's evidence to suggest that there's no autocorrelation, which is really what we want to see. We want to see a Durbin-Watson statistic value coming in in around 2. Possibly a little bit less than two or a little bit greater than two, yeah. But once it's in around two, uh, but I mean, in another video, I will run through how to generate the Durbin Watson statistic and interpret it in a lot more detail. At this stage, we're just going for a basic model, okay? It's a multiple uh, linear regression model in the sense that we have more than one independent variable, uh, but we've got one dependent variable here. And I'm just going to hit OK on that, which is going to generate our results, okay? So here's our results. Uh, it's just the first table here is just telling us what variables were fed into the model. Uh, the second variable, which is important, is the model summary. Uh, it's telling us, I suppose, with respect to the in, with respect to the dependent variable, which has natural natural fluctuation associated with it. In other words, it has a variance. Yeah, how much of that variance can we account for uh, by, I suppose, by by looking at the variance associated with the independent variables? And what we have here is the R squared value is 0.765. Okay, which when we multiply that by 100 gives us 76.5. So that's telling us about 76.5% of the variance in intention to stay in the dependent variable can be accounted for by considering job satisfaction, gender, uh, and, and age, if that makes sense. Actually, I suppose these adjusted or squared values are important as well. The more independent variables that you throw into the mix, uh, the more, I suppose, the, the more the possibility for, let's say, some sort of conflict going on. And the adjusted or squared value is actually more, more appropriate. It takes into consideration the number of independent variables that are in the mix. But actually, the adjusted or squared value is 0.75, so it's 75%, which is very close to R squared here, okay? which still tells us that 75% of the variance in the independent 
in the dependent variable can be accounted for to our independent variables. From an overall model perspective, uh, how reliable is the overall model? Well, the significance value here from the ANOVA is less than 0 0.05, uh, and as such, the model can be deemed as uh, statistically significant. In other words, it's a, it's a good model, okay? But really what we're interested in is we're interested in this set of coefficients here, yeah? Okay? And actually, we're interested in these unstandardized coefficients, these B values, okay? These are the, these are the values for our particular equation, okay? Now let's, let's try to interpret this. Okay. So